that's just my selection of ethanol that I've got in stock. Bioethanol for my bioethanol fireplace. Now let's close that up. There you go over here. And then of course, that's the actual bioethanol fireplace itself. Chimney, cast iron, um, with some cheaper metal at the top, you know. Um, got from a budget shop for the purposes of me having a bioethanol fireplace. Three bioethanol burning tin, tins. Each one is approximately half a litre in volume. Got come in from Germany of the right type for a bioethanol fireplace. Okay, pour the stuff in the hole at the top. Set fire to it, and that's all you're required to do. Now, uh, it's now approaching Halloween time, and that means that it's about to get a bit colder, and I thought I'd give myself a challenge of just relying upon ethanol as my main source of heating. Which is, I mean, that's for my main living area. I mean, this, um, I've got this downstairs room which has both kitchen and a living room, and also doubles up as a dining room, and behind me is the office area. Okay, so it's just one massive room. So this is my main uh, living accommodation. Yeah, sure, there's a bedroom upstairs, but essentially this is it. Can I actually just rely upon bioethanol as my source of heat throughout the winter? There's a company out there called Prestigious Fires, and they also sell bioethanol, um, you know, ethanol in reasonable quantities at a relatively reasonable price of one pound 82 per liter if you buy in bulk now when i'm talking about bulk i'm talking about 200 liters at about what's it 360 365 pound or thereabouts now that's actually quite an interesting price if you take into account that the price of gas central heating for the average home in england and wales has gone up from under 400 pounds about 300 and something all right okay before the millennium to over 800 pounds now you think to yourself, is there an alternative which can actually cut down the cost? So today I did a test burning. And I tried to be more scientific about the whole thing in terms of the quantity I was using up. So over here, let's go back to the cupboard. This is the bottle that I took the alcohol from. Now, don't know whether you can see that's about half empty. All right. So I've used up about half a litre or thereabouts of the ethanol uh, and I apportioned it between the three bioethanol tins. So each tin uh, had an approximate one sixth of a litre of bioethanol in it and of course I set fire to all of them, waited for the flames to get up and sort of like looked, carried on looking at the clock to get a vague idea at the time. Uh, burning time was about 45 minutes approximately for that half a litre to go um, to go up, to be gone, to be vaporised, to be destroyed, to be burned, to be obliterated. And the um, indoor temperature went up by 3 degrees, which isn't too bad in a comparatively short space of time for a, um, you know, a reasonably you know, spacious room area. And I thought, yeah, that's really rather good. Downside of it is that the atmosphere, the air inside, um, the place actually started to feel a bit um, a bit close, presumably because of the carbon dioxide produced, because there's no carbon monoxide produced, and of course the water vapour which comes off the flames themselves, and some consumption of oxygen from inside the flat. After that, I was reasonably pleased. I had a nice glowing fire for a while, which I could sit down in front and, you know, do the whole Dickensian fantasy thing. And I thought to myself, hang on a second, when this is gone, that's half of these are gone. So could I actually, you know, get up in the morning when it's freezing cold, come downstairs, pour out another half liter, get a burning going, raise the temperature inside, and would that sort of like do it? Uh, well, if the temperature outside is like really, really crap, then maybe not. I mean, the temperature outside now is approximately 8 degrees Celsius. So that's okay. Indoors is now... 19 point something or other according to my digital thermometer so we got some good temperature in here as a result of you know all the time I spent living inside here all the things inside the place have got warmer and of course I've done a couple of bioethanol burnings to try and raise the temperature and all the rest of it um, but we'll just have to wait and see I mean if I can um, do all of my 
main living space heating, not the bathroom. Okay, that's the only other you know room which has a door on it, which is in this place really. Uh, there's got my front door, I got my bathroom door. That's it, apart from the cupboard doors. Okay, so I'm not going to think about the bathroom. Can we actually maintain a substantial, sustainable living temperature purely upon ethanol without me going, you know, getting to um, too sweaty because of the humidity or, or something like that. I mean, is that actually possible? Uh, it'll be difficult to say. Now, if you do buy 200 liters, and let's say you're doing four 45-minute um, burnings a day, you could do two in the morning to get the temperature up. So that might raise the air temperature by about, let's say, six degrees. So if you saw starting temperatures like um, 10 degrees and you go up to 16, you could you could deal with that. In the depths of the winter, you know, you cope with temperature differently anyway. You, you think about temperature differently. During the height of summer, you get used to it being warm. If it's lower than 20 degrees, then you think, oh my God, it's getting chilly. In the winter, if it's 16 or 17 degrees, you think, hey man, that's okay. I can handle this, all right? Uh, so maybe you could do two 45 minute burnings for you or burning off a whole liter of ethanol first thing in the morning and then do another half liter at lunchtime and half liter at dinner time and the only other time you would use the ethanol could possibly be on your alcohol stoves one of which is right down there i don't know whether you can see it right down there at the bottom there we go which is a trangia stove and using that to boil water in a um, camping kettle so that you can then take that hot water, shove it in a hot water bottle and keep yourself warm in bed at night with plenty of duvets and covers and all sorts of things on top of you so you don't freeze your knackers off. Uh, I think that's possible. But that would still be, what, two litres? More than two litres. So let's say two and a half or three litres a day. Uh, if it was two litres a day, then we're talking about buying 200 litres. That would be uh, 100 days. Okay, there's 30 days in the calendar month. I could do you through December, January, and February. Uh, just about. That is only if you're doing two liters a day. If you're doing more, you're going to need more than that 365 pound, whatever it is, worth of ethanol uh, to keep yourself going. So I think it's, you know, the debate's still open. It's looking rather, rather close, rather tight as to whether you can actually achieve it and use bioethanol in this manner. Of course, what I haven't thought about or I haven't tried to explain is what would happen if you had got the temperature right up nice and nice and high and then just use one bioethanol burning tin going consistently, continually, you know, filling it up to the brim if you can do that safely, you know, a full half liter and then setting fire to that. Now, um, if one sixth of a liter burns for 45 minutes all right um that would have been one third of the con volume contained in a half liter tin i think yeah yes i think so all right so then set fire to that and it should burn for three times longer than 45 minutes being what an hour and a half um two and a quarter hours so let's say you did that twice in a day. Would that maintain the temperature? I think there's a possibility that it would. We'll just have to wait and see. Winter's coming. Let's have some fun.